Hey guys, how's it going? It's Target here, coming at you with another episode of the Colorado Avalanche BAGM. I hope you guys are enjoying our first season so far. We've gone through the first round of the playoffs. We were very much successful against St. Louis Blues, defeating them in five games. We've got the Nashville Predators up next, so things are heating up as we play the best team in our division. It's going to be a tough, tough uh, series here, absolutely. I'd like to take a look first at the playoff tree and see who beat who. Obviously, beat Na As uh, obviously Nashville beat Chicago or um, Calgary in seven games. They went so that's interesting. Uh, Edmonton got beat beat by Chicago, really interesting. And uh, Vancouver got defeated by Anaheim. So that series is how that looks. On the east side, New York beat uh, Toronto. Tampa beat Montreal. The Islanders beat Columbus, and Philly beat Washington. So you're going to have an Islander-Philly and Ranger-Tampa uh, games there. It'll be interesting to see if the Rangers and the Islanders meet in the, the playoffs. It's totally possible. Um, okay, so we need to compare the teams. We need to take a look and see why Nashville is so damn good this year. Maybe it's, what's his name? What the hell is the name of that guy? Maybe We'll see. We'll see if he's there. Um, NHL. Okay, so we know all our boys. Uh, we need to go to Nashville. Okay, so they don't have him. I don't see him anywhere. I can't remember his name is. I'd recognize him if I saw it. Trust me. So they've really got a well-balanced team, but nothing special, right? I mean, like, the top line, ours is better. Our second line is better. Uh, the third line, I'm going to give to them just because uh, Matt Fisher is so much better. Uh, the fourth line, you know what? We've got them beat because they've got a 68 overall playmaker down there. Um, we've got them beat on that. D, Shea Weber might be the the reason why. But our defense overall is much better. They probably have the top line beat just because of the because of Shea Weber. But the second pairing and the third pairing, I think we've got I think we've got them beat on that. It's interesting why they're so good, I don't understand. Oh, you know what? It's Pecorine. <coughs> 89 overall, that's probably why. Let's take a look at those stats there. I just want to see like the playoff stats. Uh Pecorine, he is not up there. Really? Okay, well, this is going to be an interesting series. We're going to have to see how things go. All right, guys, let me sim up to the first day here. Game one in the Stanley Cup final, or in the Stanley Cup finals, my goodness. Uh, the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs against the Nashville Predators. Here we go. All right, here we go. The first period, we're on the road. It's going to be the case again in this series. Here we go. 1-0, we're down. Okay, so David Legwan scores on Varlamov. It's going to be tough for us because our goaltending is so much worse than theirs. Second period. 2-1. Wow. Ryan O'Reilly and Cam Fowler find the net. Unbelievable. We got 27 shots through two periods. That's ungodly. Or that's godly right now. All right, 17 minutes left. Let's hold them off here, guys. A nice win on the road to start this series would be so nice. All right, we got a nice commanding shot lead. Three minutes left in the game. And that is that. We outshot them 40-29. to if you can believe that, and beat them 2-1. to one. So that second period was big for us. We needed those two goals, and uh, that really lifted us over the Nashville Predators in Game 1. Nice. So that's twice in a row we've won the first game. Can we win the second game and take a nice little series lead? That'd be lovely. Game 2 in Nashville, first period. All right, we're down one nothing again. Sergei Kostitsin scores on a slapper pass Varlamov. Uh, shots are relatively even. Second period, can we duplicate? No, we can't. No goal scored for us, but no goal scored for them either. Let's go to the third period and see if we can equalize this. 18 minutes left. Ah, oh, Patrick Hornfist scores on Varlamov. Right now, things aren't looking good. We need two goals here in the last 10. Time ticking down. I don't think we can do it. We need a miracle. And no. 2 nothing is where that'll finish, even though we managed another 38 shots in that game. Wow, we are peppering Rene, but it looks like he's the reason why they're standing strong at this point. Which is weird because he's off the stand. He's off the top, you know, the top standing. So I don't know. Maybe their first round just did not. Oh, it went to seven games, so that might have been the problem. All right, game three. We're in Colorado now. This is exactly the same play as it's gone against the St. Louis Blues. Can we do something against Nashville? First period. Oh, we're down one nothing. Uh, Gabriel Bork scores on Varlamov. We're outshot in that one by four. Second period. Oh my God, we're down three nothing. Colin Smith and Paul Gostad both score. And uh, third period. I'm just gonna sim it. Uh, we got one. Matt Duchesne scored. <coughs> so we've now conceded two games in a row to the Nashville Predators. They are the best team in our division, so I'm really not going to be too upset if we lose this series. Uh, I think it's a pretty good showing for our first go-around. Not as good as Toronto in NHL 13. 
but not bad either. All right, we go to game four. We have a chance here to tie this series up. We are at home. Let's do our fans proud. Come on, guys. Go out fighting. First period, no goals scored. Outshot big time in that one. We were outshot by six shots. Second period, no goals scored again. Shots are even now, though. We held them just to a modest six shots in that one. Third period, I'm going to sim it slow. All right, come on. There you go. One goal. P.A. Parento scores on Pecorine. Come on, guys. Hold some strong. Oh, I was about to say hold some strong D, but they let one in. Oh, and another one. They're coming fast and furious now. We're only down by one. This is definitely doable. Come on, guys. Score one here. You got a power play. Ah, oh, they buggered it up, and that's going to do it. 2-1 the final in that one, even though the shots were very much even. Uh, we're going to go to game game six now. Uh, or is it game five? Game five. We're down three games to one. I'm really not happy right now. We'll see how things go here. Oh, my goodness. All right. Game five in Nashville. First period, no goal scored. Okay, outshot 12 to 7. This is a do or die game. We need to score here. Second period, no goal scored again. 18 to 22 of the shots. I'm going to go by four. This is a crucial period for us. 16 minutes left. Ah, oh, Victor Stahlberg scores. Ah, oh, David Leguan scores. Come on, guys. Two goals. You can come back from this. It's tough, though. Pecorini is a really good goalie. Yeah, this is going to end it. Well, it was a good season. Not a bad season. We saw some progress from our top players. I'm really not disappointed with that. Out in the second round in our first year, we can only hope to build off of that, you know? I'm really... I'm I'm, I'm happy. I, I'm not happy we're out. I'm just happy that, you know, we did well. I think we did pretty well for a team that didn't really expect to make that far in the playoffs. I expected to make the first round and maybe challenge for a win I didn't really expect to win it we got one win out of the series and that was the first game I'm happy with that a good result and we can only expect to get better next year all right so we got we got to basically just concede that we weren't as good as them and we'll just sim right up here get through this series not bad yeah you really got to take these things with a grain of salt I usually get quite upset but that's only when things don't work out the way the team should work out. You know what I mean? Like, for example, if anybody watched the Carolina Hurricane series when it came to uh, NHL 13, how good our team was and the fact that we wouldn't win Stanley Cups was insane. And then Toronto... Oh, this guy's a top five. I better scout this guy. Um, and then Toronto turned around and basically won the Stanley Cup the first three years in a row. And they didn't have anybody really elite, elite. You know what I mean? They had Phil Kessel, yeah. And then they had uh, JBR, but he was never really a great player for us. Um, Nazem Kadri got to be pretty good, but we made good trades. You know, we had a lot of players. We had, like, Nathan McKinnon. We had Nal Yakupov. We had Justin Schultz. We had a lot of good players. So I think a lot of it had to do with that. Um, but we did well. It's just, it boggles my mind when you lose games that you shouldn't. That's what drives me crazy. Okay, so through to the 13th, where are we here in the... Usually it's the 13th of June where everything switches over. Um, awards? Hope oh, not awards. Um, playoff tree. That's what we want. Let's take a look here. So, oh, Tampa Bay won. It didn't even tell us that. They swept the Chicago Blackhawks, who ended up being Nashville. Unbelievable. Um, so Tampa Bay and New York, and then Tampa Bay won the Stanley Cup. Good for you guys. That was who it was between us and Tampa Bay that our vote came down for for the BGM. So that's interesting too. All right, so they won. Um, now we're gonna have there's the re here's the resign, and there's the draft. Um, let's simulate up to the twenty second here and see what happens. I don't know what's gonna happen. It looks like something's happening here. I wonder what the cap's gonna go up to as well. That's gonna be a big thing. Our cap space because we got to sign players and somebody was saying that the 0.85 still works uh thank you brett for checking into that so that's usually where players get better right there let me do this first i'm going to stop the simulation so it's gone up to 67 million dollars 
So it gives us not much. That's like $3 million more, basically. So we don't have much to work with. We'll have to see how things look here. Um, uh, no. Stop the simulation, please. Stop the friggin' simulation. <laughs> okay, this is going to show our retirees here, I guess. Um, let's see here. yager has gone. Solani, Hammerlick, Whitney, Smith, Dvorak, Bertuzzi, Koivu, Redden, Haydu, Caberle, Oland, Kabina, Myers. Lots of guys. Sheldon Surrey. It's guys who just retired from free agency. And Holmquist uh, retired. But Brodeur's still sticking around. All right. Broder is going to hang around a little bit longer. Uh, we'll go to the trading block. I'm going to still keep it the same because I still want those players. Uh, we'll go to the GM tracker and see what we can apply. <coughs> Nothing really. So we're just going to leave it for now. Okay. So uh, I want to go to scouting. And I want to see exactly what there is for players. Uh, scouting report, I believe, is the one. Yes. Okay. So, top players, remember, it's only kind of relative to what you search. So, D'Angelo, he's, he's a D-man, but they got him second round, going going in the second round. Ekblad, Reinhardt, these guys are top players. I don't know why they've got them listed only as first round. We scouted them quite a bit, I would think. Let's see. Does it show how many visits we made to see Reinhardt? After three or more visits. So, we did go see him. A lot. I don't understand why there's not more info on him, but okay. So there's going to be a little bit more um, risk to some of these players. Like they may, like Vertinen, they got him as a three star, but he's not going to be a three star. He may be a four star. D'Angelo, they got him as a four star, but he might be more, might be less than that. Uh, what about goalies? Because goalies is what we're looking for. Um, yeah, just Fotinos is the only one really. They have got him as a first round player. We have a couple first round picks, so I'm going to take a look by what they suggest, and then we'll go by stars. And then league interest and all that stuff. We'll see how we can draft in this game. What kind of players we can get. So we have two first round picks. I'm not going to trade up. I feel like we'll be okay. Uh, let's see if it, we can check to see if anybody went up. Uh, GM options. That's what we're going to want. And then we're going to want contracts. Um, it looks like, yeah, people did go up. Okay. So people did go up. But we will we'll delve into that a little bit later. All right. So let's go to the draft. Let's start the NHL entry draft, boys. Take a look and see what we can get. So we have the 17th and the 26th. Um, we really don't need to move up. We don't, unless there was a goaltender, that's the only way I'd move up in this draft. I still think we can get Fotinos, and maybe he comes out to be a four-star player. Um, or we can get somebody else. Let's see if anybody offers us any trades. Well, let's see what Florida's top pick is like. Maybe we can. Let's see how much they want for Florida's pick. We got poor rating, and look at how high that rank, that pick is. Good God. LA, the 10th. What's ours worth? Like, nothing. Nothing at all. The 17th is not bad, but not great. Look at all the picks we have, too. So we're going to have a lot of depth. We're going to be able to add some players, maybe. Get lucky with some. I think that's going to happen more often in this game. You get more lucky with your drafts. So let's see. Pepin went first. Wow, Nick Ritchie, Basal, Vertinen. Reinhardt went there. Fatino, Reinhardt and Ekblad went late. Look at that. 12 and 14. Fatinos went 13. Hosang went 16. That's very interesting. Okay, let's see who we can pick up then. Let's see what's available because our goalie's gone. Uh, it's sorted by first round projection. Let's see if there's any stars that are rated high. Okay, so we got D'Angelo is still there. He's an offensive four star D. Um, Dreisaitl, we've picked him up before in the previous games. Um, I don't think he's very good. He's about three and a half star. Um, D'Angelo, they got as a second round, so we might be able to leave him till later. Let's see. Colton Bobick, 2 AD D-man. Uh, Jace Horlick, he's tiny. 5'9", 149 pound centerman. What's his face-off rating like? What do we have on that? 79 face-offs, and that's semi-accurate. That's not bad for a playmaker. We might be able to pick him up. Uh, Marcus Hines, another two-way forward. Peter Trainer, two-way forward. Uh, Connor Rankin, a playmaker. Um, Alex Blomqvist, a power forward. He's only got him three and a half star. We don't have anything on Guillaume Cuche. Uh, Chase Wittala, not much on these guys. Okay, so let's take, let's, you know what? I think I'm going to go with Haraluk. I know he's tiny, but he's 18 years old, so he's really young. And he's got decent face-offs from what I can see. 
We've actually got some good scouting reports on him because we spent some time in the OHL, or in the WHL, pardon me. And uh, he could be a little bit faster, but he will get up there. His shot's not bad in terms of power. The accuracy could be much better, but it isn't. Um, yeah, you know what? We'll take a chance on Harlick on that one. And I'm think I'm I'm interested in uh, where's that power forward? What do they got him rated as? Uh, where is he? Alex Blomqvist. He's 6'5", 198. He's gonna fill out. I am interested in him. Um, so I think I'm gonna take a chance on Harlick on this one or Bobic maybe. Uh, Harlick or Bobic? They got him as a first line. You know what? Let's go with Harlick on this one. We've got enough D. Uh, Bobic is not available anymore. Um. So that defenseman probably still is, though. They got him his full second round. Where is he? D'Angelo and Dreisaitl. You know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with uh, D'Angelo. I think. Hold on. Actually, you know what? We might leave D'Angelo. Where is that power forward? They got him his second round as well, or is he gone? On oh, no, a blank fist, there is second round. High interest. Now, what about the interest on D'Angelo? Do you have high interest as well? This is taking forever. Yeah, he did too. You know what? I'm going to go with D'Angelo on this one, and we'll try and pick up Blomqvist in the next one. Power forwards are easier to come by, I think, than a quality offensive D-man. All right, so we'll sim through that. We do have a high pick here, so Blomqvist is still available according to that. We got 14th round pick here, or 14th overall pick. Shut that down the phones. I don't need this. Let's just hope Blomqvist is still there. No, he got taken. Okay, so we're going to have to see what's available. Um... Defensive D-man, defensive D-man. Uh, Ryan Willick, or Dylan Willick. He's a uh, two-way forward. He's not very big. Another two-way forward. Uh, playmaker. Two-way forward. A sniper. Maybe a sniper. I mean, uh, here you go. Josh Winquist. He's 20 years old. He could be better than that. We don't know. It's really difficult to tell. They've put a lot of emph emphasis. Oh, look at these guys. Why are there two of them? Alex and Elaine, they're brothers for sure. Look at that. They look identical. That's hilarious. Twins. That's awesome. Uh, ben Duffy. Jonathan Laser. Hold on. Let's take a look at this. Let's see if Drysaddle's still there. He might still be there. No, he's gone. Uh, Fioretti. Playmaking center. We've already got one of those. A grinder. Okay, I'm going to... I'm. Well, he's fourth, fifth round. I'm not going to get him. Not, not at the grinder stage. It's too early. Uh, any grinders that appear here? Oh, as an enforcer. Keith McLean. Oh, I got him as a third rounder, so I'm going to wait on that. Um, I want a bigger... I want some bigger players. But not D-man. I want a bigger forward man. Let's take a look at all forwards. Projected to go second round. Let's see what their sizes are. There's not many big ones. Ah, here you go. Oh, it's second, third round. Um, We got a playmaking left winger and a center two way forward. What's his face offs like? Do we have any kind of a projection on him? Nothing. One visit. We don't have any idea what he is. Well, you know what? I'm going to take a chance because you can't have too many centers. That's for sure. Uh, we'll take a chance on Jared McCann. All right. Okay, so we're going to have to keep going here because we got so many. We got a lot of picks in the fourth round. That's where, oh, that's where things are going to show up. Let's take a look here. See who's available still. I want that grinder. <laughs> TJ Foster is back in the draft. He's 22 years old. Holy shit. Um, is my grinder gone? Or the enforcer gone? What the hell was his name? Does anybody remember what his... F oh, it was he was way down. Hold on. Let's see if there's any big guys. Here you go. Uh, power forward. He's got him in the fourth round. We've still got third round picks available, right? Yeah, quite a few. Um, playmaker. Two-way forward. we got enough of those. Defensive D playmaker. Sniper? Here we go. Let's try Sniper. Riley Sheen, I guess. Or if we got a bigger Sniper here. No, let's try Riley Sheen. Why not? Get a Sniper in there. Alright, now we got all these picks in the fourth round. We got tons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Probably not going to be anything, but hey, they may be trade bait in the future. See him up here. Alright, now I want to get probably that Enforcer. I want to see what he's like. I'd take a gamble on an Enforcer. Hold on. Oh, shit. Sort by this. This video is going to go a little bit long, guys, just so you know, because we um, didn't get done as much as we like. Um, where's the enforcer? He's got to be here. There's a grinder here in Zin Zinder. Where's the enforcer? Was he taken? Oh, he was taken for sure. 
If he's not here at this point. What the hell was his name? I don't remember what the hell his name was. That's too many names to go through. Okay, so let's take some grinders here. Let's add some depth grinders. Um, sort by potential. And then we'll go by fourth, fifth round, whichever is better. Um, sniper, no, not worth. No one wants him. Uh, here we go. Fourth, fifth round. Uh, fifth, sixth round grinder. Nick Zindri. 6'5", 241. He's a huge grinder. Um, let's see who else there is. Any other grinders going? Okay, here. Kyle Haas. That was the other one. He's 6'1", 2... Or 170, so that's not bad. And, um... Yeah, we're getting into the depth. Like, the bowels of the, the draft. I'm gonna go with this Dia. We've drafted Dia before, and he can do pretty well. Jean-Sebastien Dia. Six feet. Let's try him. He's a center sniper. He might be worth something. And then I may just auto-sim all this shit. Because we're getting to the point where it's... You know... Not worth it. We got ya Yaiman Yublowski. He's a grinder, 5'10". Um, I like getting grinders deep because you can get... You never know. We have no idea. High interest in him. And then we'll just... We'll just sim. Auto-draft the rest. Whatever. Good enough. Draft is complete. Alright, guys. When we come back, we're going to take a look at the team. See who we have to re-sign. What we need to do. Um, there's, it's going to be interesting. We've got not much cap space. We've got $3 million to work with. And I think that Landeskog needs a new contract. I'm really not sure on that. We'll be taking a look into it very shortly. So until next time, I'm Target Audience. You guys have a good one.